Welcome back to Motor Learning on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing the differences between constant practice and variable practice. And before I go any further, I just wanted to say that I actually started making this video and designing it before uh, shortly before uh, the unfortunate incident with Kobe Bryant here. My family are heavy-duty Los Angeles Lakers fans. So um, I wasn't born yet, but I do. I watched reruns all the time of, you know, the when the Lakers did a three-peat back in the 80s. They had Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Byron Scott, James Worthy, all that. And eventually got Shaquille O'Neal and then Kobe Bryant here. And so before I go any further, I just wanted to say we all love you, man. Rest in peace. All right, so constant and variable practice. So a good example to uh, illustrate the difference is really just a jump shot in basketball. Okay, So we'll start with constant practice. What is it? It's practicing the same task in the same conditions, same environment, just the same way every single time. So imagine going into a court and picking a spot somewhere uh, probably, probably midway between the basket and the three-point line, and you just practice a jump shot the same way, the same conditions, the exact same spot. Nothing has changed. There's no variability in constant practice. Now, constant practice, there's a couple things about this. One, if you're first learning the motor skill for the very first time, if you've never taken a jump shot before, if you've never played basketball, you probably want constant practice because you've never done it before. You need to get the basic skills before you ever start making it more challenging. And so constant practice is normally best done when you want to take a skill and just get really good at that, but you're not necessarily applying it, so in the initial stages of learning. However, when in a basketball game do you ever get an opportunity to take that same jump shot in the same spot, in the same way, under the same conditions? Never. It's never going to happen. Okay. So obviously, constant practice, this is the second thing, would probably not be good for application to other situations. And that's true. And so we would have to eventually progress to what's called variable practice. So all variable practice is, is you take the same skill, let's say the simple jump shot, and you just vary parameters of the task. Now, I can think of a lot of ways that we could vary that jump shot. The easiest way is just change the location, right? Um, obviously, you had never know where you're going to be taking a jump shot in a game. You can't really plan that as well as you would like. So you have to change the location, change the distance from the goal. You could eventually do it off of a dribble. You could do a fadeaway. You could do it while someone's defending you. You could do a turnaround jump shot. And you could even do things like change the uh, lighting, which would be, I guess you could call that a distraction. You could do it with background noise. For example, uh, when you have the away team and one of their players is shooting a free throw, oftentimes the crowd who's behind the goal is making a huge amount of noise, waving all of these, you know, these, I don't know what they are, noodles or something to kind of distract the person shooting the free throw, right? So all of these things can be varied. These are all parameters that you can change. So again, we can change the components of the task. That could be just as simple as basically moving it farther away from the basket or closer up. Change the timing of the task. Timing would be affected, obviously, if you're doing off a dribble or against a defender. Change the displacement or the velocity. Um, in some cases, you might want to shoot the shot faster um, if you're running out of time. Things like that. And then, of course, environmental conditions are going to be things like the distractions. Okay. Um, and again, we can think about Gentile's taxonomy when varying the parameters of that task. Remember, Gentile's taxonomy is a way to progressively increase, or in some cases, decrease the complexity of a task. But just in general, variable practice, you take that one skill and vary the parameters. And so variable practice is going to be a lot better uh, for application to different situations, for example, a game. But that game may not necessarily be inside of a basketball court in a gym. It could just be one of those outdoor basketball courts on concrete. And so doing the same uh, type of shot, but under different conditions, varying all these parameters, is important to be able to apply to a much larger uh, array of situations. 
But in order to do the variable practice, you need the basic skill set. And so that's where constant practice would come into play. So constant practice you might actually do when you're very first learning the motor skill. But once you get a certain number of those uh, tools under your belt, so to speak, then you can apply some variable practice, change the parameters, and then you can diversify uh, to different situations. All right. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of these two things, constant and variable practice. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.